Welcome back. You're watching The Money Show on ET Now. Well, it's time for our Spend with TMS segment then, and we've got something very interesting for you. While most of us are in what we call as a revenge travel mode, what we are unfortunately finding is that a lot of the hotels, resorts that we'd like to go to seem to be fully sold out. Well, here's another method of traveling, caravan traveling. Now, I'm sure a lot of you are unfamiliar with it. You may not even have seen too many um, you know, caravans around in India, but there are companies providing caravans on rent. I have with me one such company, Jigyasu Joshi, the co-founder of Carva Travelers, joins us now on the show. Jigyasu, hi, good evening, and thanks so much for taking our time and joining us. Hi, Mubina. Thank Let's you so much for having us. Let's start first with, um, you know, a bit about what exactly does... Let's start off first with, uh, you know, talking about what exactly does caravan traveling entail? Does it... Is it literally like what we've seen in movies abroad, some back home as well, where you have, um, you know, the entire apartment built into one compact movable vehicle? Uh, exactly. So it is exactly like how we have seen in the movies, uh, minus the discomforts here and there a little bit that it has. Uh, so of course it comes with its own challenges, but yeah, of course it's 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 exactly like what we have seen in the movies. So basically the caravans or also known as camper vans, they are B&B on wheels. So they have all the uh, amenities uh, like a washroom or a kitchenette and everything and a bed and everything. And they are just on wheels. So yeah, it is exactly like what we have seen in the movie. Well, that in itself sounds pretty dreamy. Uh, Jigyasu, tell us how, um, you know, what is the suitability and feasibility of caravan traveling? Uh, if I want to, let's say, book, uh, you know, for six days and seven days, and of course, the biggest advantage I understand would be that I have the freedom to move around as in, you know, where I want. All I need to look for is parking, of course. But how feasible is it to book uh, a caravan for six days, seven days, eight days over booking hotels? Uh, so, Mubina, if I uh, let's let's get into a little bit of a calculation over here. So, uh, let's say if you book a average three-star hotel, so uh, let's take the price as a, a per-night tariff to be somewhere around five thousand for two rooms because we are taking in a caravan five people can be accommodated at a time. So, I'm just taking that example. So, if we take five people in a caravan and those five people, if they are going for let's say a six-day trip and they book a hotel. So if they book a hotel, the hotel would cost them a lot more than what a caravan or a camper van would cost them. Uh, how? Let me just tell you a, with a bit of some uh, with some numbers. So uh, an average tariff for the uh, for for two rooms for five people would be somewhere around five thousand rupees. Uh, we are taking an average of a three star hotel and add to it the transportation, the commute that you would be have like wherever you will be traveling, you'll take another cab. That is again going to charge that is again going to charge you a certain amount. So we have taken that amount as uh, 4,000 rupees for a day for two cabs because since there are five people. And then the food and the other charges also. So all in all, the calculators, it came to be somewhere around, uh, somewhere around 13,000, 13, 14,000. If you take a uh, trip with five people for six days uh, and if you book a hotel, whereas if you book a camper van, this cost would come down to 8,000 rupees only. Which would include your accommodation, which would include your, uh, uh, which would include your uh, travel and uh, all the travel expenses, and also food. So uh, yeah, it comes down. It, it it gets it gets very low, and it's very very feasible for anybody who's uh, uh, you know looking to have a, tra a budget travel and also have adventure at the same time. So yeah, it it, it works very well for all those backpack travelers and budget travelers. Just to, uh, you know, I just have a follow-up question on that, Jigyasu, that the, the food material is all mine. You provide the amenities with which I can make a meal for myself. So it practically makes it almost like a home-cooked meal. Am I right? right? That's right. That's absolutely correct. All right. Okay, great, great. Now, um, you know, again, I, I want to keep it with the feasibility portion because, you know, many of us are not very familiar with caravan traveling. I reckon 90% of my viewers may never have even seen the inside of a caravan, including myself, by the way. So, Jigyasu, let's talk about uh, the requirements before I decide to hop into a caravan and go cross-country driving. What kind of a license would I need? What kind of permissions would I need for this? 
So the, uh, this is a very, uh, I mean, uh, the things are very proper now because uh, as per the recently amended Motor Vehicles Act, uh, anybody can drive a LCV category camper van. LCV is light commercial vehicle. Uh, any camper van that is registered under the LCV category can be driven by anybody with a normal license also. So uh, there's there's no need for anybody to have a you know a specialized license system. Uh, there's there's nothing like special permit required for driving it. Anybody who wants to who can drive a car can drive a camper van also. So there's no yeah, special license required for that. But what about for uh, parking? Uh, you know, unfortunately, that's the. I think that's something that all of us consider even before we buy a car. Do I have adequate parking space? So when it comes to a caravan, you know, obviously you go around places, but then you want to get off and explore the place. So do you need special permissions for parking, especially in you know the smaller towns away from metros, because that's where you know um, uh, the the touristy parts of India are. Right. So. Uh... There's no special permits required, Mavina, as such, you know. Uh, see, the infrastructure around caravan in India is developing. Uh, we have seen a gradual growth in that uh, in the past one, one and a half years that we have been uh, in the market. And there has been a, a steady growth in the infrastructure around it. However, uh, the parking and all those things are still in, uh, are still some, sometimes it becomes an issue uh, because the parking space, uh, spaces for caravans are less. However, we have uh, we have found uh, ample support from the locals wherever we are going and we are parking the van. They are very accommodating to us. So uh, we don't require any special permits if we just want to park at some random location. All we need to do is just speak with the locals and you know uh, make sure that they are not uncomfortable because of us uh, being there. So if they are okay with it, uh, we can park our vans anywhere. And there's no special permit required as such. But yeah, of course, if we are in a uh, in an army area or a cantonment area. Uh, we might need permission from the officials. Otherwise, it's all uh, it's all smooth. Well, we'd have loved to chat more, but unfortunately, we are out of time. Uh, Jigyasu, thanks so much for introducing caravan traveling to all of our viewers. Uh, I think it's an exciting way to travel and a different one, definitely, especially for those who are who've got that adventurous bone in their body and you know want to take a bit of an offbeat holiday. This is definitely something to consider, not to mention the quantum of flexibility it gives you. Thanks once again. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Movina. Thanks. And with that, we are completely out of time on this episode of The Money Show as well. Many thanks for watching. Stay tuned to ET Now.